Margus, uh, in what sort of development phase this company, Ambient Sound Investments, currently is after seven years after its uh, establishment? Mm -hmm. um, we started venture capital type of investments around 2006, and so far we have invested in uh, around 30 companies, and um, they are based in US, in Europe, um, in Asia as well. And of course, in terms of numbers, most of the companies are based in Estonia. Uh, how come there has been no exits from your investments so far, apart from uh, from selling uh, shares in Skype? Mm -hmm. uh, what we usually do, our phase is, is investing in pre-revenue phase. And it means that it might take one year, two years, when you get to the market, you get the first customers. Um, Maybe one third of our portfolio companies uh, don't yet have recurring revenue because of the R&T work that has been done and so on. Um, so for us, we, we have to realize that, uh, that investing in pre-revenue phase, there are very rarely um, are opportunities for quick exits. There are different uh, companies in your portfolio, but uh, is it true that you haven't made any investments in Estonia in during the last two or three years? Um, probably more like during the last two years. Uh, to be more precise, last year we made two investments only. One into UK company and the other one was uh, in Taiwan. Why? Um, so few? And, and basically at the same time we looked through something like uh, 400 projects during, uh, during one year. So we, we we probably have, have been more selective uh, in terms of the technologies, in terms of the teams um, and, um, and we'd like to make better selection out, out of seas. At the same time, we statistics is that we've gone through 400 uh, projects. We probably have uh, taken a deeper look in maybe 20 or 30 of them and, and made even due diligence in 5 or 6. From where this selectiveness comes from? Definitely from uh, from previous uh, experience, from the investments we have made so far. And uh, for example, um, one conclusion you can make is that uh, very strong technology uh, just doesn't sell itself. Uh, there is kind of saying that or experience that uh, very good selling and marketing uh, with average technology outperforms companies with weak marketing and selling, with very strong technology. So um, you just can't look only at how strong is the technology, but rather look at the team and their ability to sell in the market and, uh, and try to estimate that as well. So the question is uh, human resource? Basically it comes down to that most often. But why Asia? You have made several investments in Asia. Um, well, we, we have some investments in US, some in Asia, and, and, and some in Europe. And these, these markets are all, all very different. Uh, US market is definitely most established. And average pipeline is way stronger. At the same time, there is quite a lot of seed money as well. Um, VCs over there are very comfortable investing in, in pre-revenue companies. In Asia, the market cruise, uh, cruise is, is very strong. and. Um, and definitely the number of people in Asia is, is way bigger. So there are quite a lot of, kind of social networks or, or that kind of uh, startups uh, that are orientated uh, to the, let's say, wider audience, more like consumer orientated rather than enterprise orientated. And, um, and having said that, uh, of course, there is less seed or pre-revenue type of funding in, in Asia as well. Some countries are really trying hard to, to get that type of financing, like Singapore, for example, has many incentives in, in place and they're trying really hard to get uh, outside investments to the seed stage, early stage, for A rounds, for example. 
last year you made only two investments. Uh, does that mean there's a need for change in your investment principles or, or focus? Um, I wouldn't say that exactly. Uh, I mean, we, we, we have kind of stronger criteria in terms of the upside of, of the company, in terms of teams, and uh, most probably we continue uh, making investments, maybe two, three, four per year. There are, there are definitely companies uh, or, or VCs out there who, who would like to make something like 100 investments per year. And it means that you get the pipeline, you make decisions very quickly, you spread out the money, and, and you're not really able to contribute to the companies. Um, the number of portfolio companies we have actually right now is, is quite, quite big already. So we try to take a small number uh, investments in, in coming years as well. If you look at the funding proposals, what can you say? I mean, uh, what sort of trends are there from which sectors? Are the proposals coming from? Um, quite, uh, quite different again. Uh, for example, in Scandinavia, you would see kind of hard technologies, innovations, very much enterprise oriented. Um, in Asia, you would see way more consumer oriented social networks, as we as we talked before as well. Uh, mobile solutions, for example, everything that is oriented to the huge number of potential customers in, in China, for example, or, or other countries as well. Um, so they are all a bit different, differently focused, because as you can imagine, uh, to get one cent out of every Chinese <laughs> or from every Estonian, it's a bit different amount of money. So, so European companies in these terms are a bit more uh, enterprise oriented, I would say. What is the common base for these projects you have been rejecting? Uh, there might be always very different uh, different reasons. For example, uh, there are a huge number of nice-to-have projects. Uh, like, for example? You know, some, some stuff in where it, it does something better or creates some kind of link somewhere, so... Um, not really very strong value propositions in terms that you, you would expect that the company will will grow over 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 time really strong way it has very strong value proposition um, have really market demand for that for example so we are like solving this small thing or, or another small thing and and uh, sometimes I would say that there are lifestyle lifestyle entrepreneurs behind them and that is actually very much okay it is, it is definitely one way, one way to go. Uh, for us, we, we should see definitely strong market demand and team behind it who can, uh, who can implement it. Um, we will look for stronger technologies that have really, really strong value proposition for, for potential customers. And at the same time, there's very often a uh, question about the team. Uh, people who create Great technologies are maybe not that good uh, in selling, in marketing, uh, in management, and and it's quite rare to see these kind of combinations. Uh, one discussion we might have with with um, with uh, projects in pipeline as well, if the company grows over time and the management skills of the founders are are not there, are these people ready to? take another role in the company and, and let, for example, a profes professional team to, to come in. And, um, and if we look at the companies right now, I would see that uh, at the end of the day, the team is uh, absolute criteria.